Welcome back, this is Tubal Kane again, and this is part two of a two-part video on making a thread protector for the little Craftsman Atlas Lathe. So be sure and watch part one if you have not already, and thanks for joining me, and here we go as I finalize this project. I'm getting close, so let me take a measurement. I think I can finish it up in one pass. I'm using the telescoping gauge here. To me, I, I'm not for rough work. This is okay with a caliper, but I prefer this with a micrometer or a. Uh, so I'm at one three fifty two. So I got eight thousandths left. pass I think. I'm getting a nice finish but the finish could matter less because I'm going to thread over it. And it's cutting quite nicely without any oil at the moment. Nice sharp carbide tool. Um, 62. Next is the counter bore, and that's about 5 sixteenths. And the diameter here, I just miked it again, is a little bit over one and a half inches, so I'm going to make it 1.510, and I will set the carriage stop for th that depth. I'm just feeding by hand, no power feed, up to the carriage stop, and then I can feel it when the carriage strikes the carriage stop. And that's, again, 5 sixteenths this way, and I'll measure, and I've got a couple more cuts to make yet. Well, there it is. The counter bore is complete, and I'm ready for threading. So I'll make that set up. I'm not going to show the complete threading uh, exercise here or the complete setup because I've done this in so many other videos and, and you can refer to that if you've never seen internal threading. But uh, basically here I have a boring bar with a 60 degree high speed steel tool in there. I wish I had the correct boring bar with the nice carbide, uh, but I don't have one. The compound set at 29 degrees to the left. I'm in back gears, fairly slow speed, it's about 45 RPM. The thread chasing dial, which is off camera, is engaged. Uh, the quick change gearbox is set for 8. And uh, the tool is squared up and on center, as far as the vertical position is concerned. Remember, I can. it's an even number of threads, so the thread chasing dial can be uh, caught, if you will, with the half nut lever at any number or any line. I've already taken an initial pass and I'm watching in here, because I can't really use a carriage stop, I'm watching in here as the threading tool appears and then I am disengaging the half nut lever. The cross slide is set to uh, zero. and I will turn off the machine, screw the cross slide in, then back out to zero, take a light cut with the compound feeding 
out just a few thousandths. Now I wouldn't turn it off in all of this if it wasn't for the video. I know you can't hear me too well. And here's another cut. When you're doing internal threading, turn your phone off, uh, turn the radio off, concentrate, tell people around you not to bother you, and because you can't see what you're doing very well with internal threading. You can't see it on the video, and I can't see it myself, really, without using a flashlight, and uh, there's chips in the way, so it's, it's a little something different than what we're used to doing every day, but it, it, uh, there you can see a better view of the 60 degree tool. Coming along nicely, just a few more passes. I think this is the final pass and I'm going to try a test fit after this pass. I'm going to take the chuck off and reverse the whole thing and see if it'll go on. Okay, let's see what happens. It's kind of awkward with this big heavy chuck. My gosh. Do you believe that? Well, I'm done with uh, threading. And off comes the chuck. Set that aside. I gotta loosen that up a little bit. But now I'm gonna do the final truing, take a light cut to true it, and put that angle on there while it is on the spindle. I was really surprised that it turned out to be the a good fit to start with. You never know what to expect. From the bare very beginning, my intent was to do this while it was on the, sp the spindle. So now I'm going to take a cut and true it up, but since I'm cutting so close to the housing back here, that's just about the limit of the travel of the carriage, so notice that I've got the, the allure setting much farther out than what I would normally want, but it's going to work. I've got to turn the speed up. It's not quite cleaning up, it'll take one more pass. And here it is, the second and final pass. Just enough to clean it up. The diameter is irrelevant. Taking a real light facing cut on the front also, 
to true it up in case it was a little bit off. It's probably totally unnecessary. I don't want to hit the hardened spindle, but I think I got clearance there. Okay, ready for the taper. And now I'm going to cut this taper. And remember that's 55 degrees, so I've got the compound set for 55 degrees, and it's about 7 sixteenths long, and I've laid out a red ring here, if you can see that. Maybe it doesn't show up. And then this is just simply the compound rest method of turning a taper. slowly to try to get a good cut. Then I'll break a couple corners with a file and it's complete other than drilling the hole. Next, I need to drill that hole for the spanner, but before I go over there, this is the tool that I was using for threading. Just a little 3 16 square, grounded 60 degrees, and that's left from another job many years ago. I guess I ground it. I don't know where I got it, but there it is. But really what I wanted to use, I don't have one, is a boring bar that will hold this type of insert. That's a threading insert. However, it would be a different one to fit in the, the boring bar for internal threading. But the, that's kind of on my want list. Those are pretty nice. That's from Shars. I'll meet you over at the Bridgeport. I'm over on the Bridgeport now, and the last step was to drill this little hole in here for the spanner. And that'll be a quarter inch hole. And it will not be quite all the way through. In other words, it's a blind hole, although it wouldn't hurt if it went all the way through, but then you'd have a burr, so I'm going to make it a blind hole. And it doesn't really need to be done on the milling machine. It certainly could be done on the drill press. It is not that critical, but I like to center it, make sure that it's, that it's not off-center, because visually it looks amateurish if you drill a crooked hole. So I'm just going to put that in the vise. Tighten her down a little bit, and I'm using a wiggler here to locate both the, uh, from this side, so I can come into the axis, x-axis in the correct amount, and since this is 2.350 in diameter, I'm going to move in half of that, and I have to take into account that this is a 250 thousandth ball, so half of that's 125, and the reason I'm using the wiggler, I started to say, is because a regular uh, edge finder will not work on something this large in diameter because it's liable to hit the body first. So I'm going to use the wiggler. That's what I used to, 
to, to, uh, or I learned on to start with when I was a young machinist. And then I'll also touch off here, or I should say back here, and move in at 600 thousandths there. So half of that is 300 thousandths and take into account the ball. Okay, I'm ready to wiggle. I'll come in until the wiggler trues up. Right there. Now I'm going to raise it. Zero out the uh, digital readout, which is off camera, but you don't need to see it really. And then I'm going to move uh, 1.300 thousandths, and that takes me to the center of the work. In the x-axis, I'm looking at the DRO. Right there, I'm on 1.300. I'll lock the table in the x-axis, and then I'm going to repeat the same thing in the y-axis. And I need to move in 0.425, which is half of 600 plus the radius of the ball. So that's 425. Again, I'm going to zero out the DRO and crank it in 425. Again, you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you a good way. And now I lock the table again in the y-axis. And now I am located, ready to drill. This is a quarter inch stubby drill bit and I'm going to go in, uh, well, I need about a quarter inch depth, but I'm going to make it 300 thousandths to overcome the, the taper on the end of the, of the, uh, or the angle on the end of the drill bit. I like to come down until it touches the work. I have zeroed out the knee and I'll crank it up 300 thousandths with the knee and then that's real accurate and in fact much more accurate than is needed. That's one, 200, 300. Well, I don't have quite the clearance here. I've got to loosen it up to, to actually test that. Well, by gosh, I think I'll do it now. What am I waiting for, huh? You see, the pin does not bottom out. I don't know where I got this thing. It almost looks homemade. All right, back to the bench to conclude this little project. You know what? I realize people from all over the world watch my video. It's clear down to New Zealand. And uh, howdy down under there. But there will be only three people in the whole world that will actually make one of these. But it might have been interesting to watch this as I was doing it. Simply because so many of these operations are uh, universal and can be used for other projects. Also, some of you watch this strictly for the entertainment value. Uh, because there's nothing else on television to watch. And I watch a lot of stuff on my smart TV. But uh, to conclude things here, just take a little bit of a countersink there. And uh, let me mention this now. Some place or another I have a dedicated uh, spanner wrench that is this size or is this size. Just remember this varies just a little bit here. But this is a universal one. It in fact is, uh, let's see, what does it say on there? Universal Adjustable Spanner. That's a William. And it's good for anywhere between one and three quarter to three inch. I got a bunch of these. I like these. 
I got some of the larger size too. But this will more or less conform, but yet not perfectly. Whereas this one, wherever that came from, seems to conform perfectly. Got quite a bit of a reflection there. Reflection on a golden eve. Let's go put it on the atlas. Okay, here's the acid test. There's the collet adapter, spindle adapter for the three C collets. I got it in back here, so now I want to pop this off, so that's what I'm showing you here. And I had tapped it in uh, rather tightly, if I dare say so. And there we go. Hope you enjoyed this little video. See you next time. This is Tubal Kane.